and then we have a very deep sentence after that this blaze and hieroglyph of prophet moon a meaning most sublime in symbol rise then seal thought wakes to but of this high script how shall my voice convince the mind of earth i can't convince the mind of man it is beyond the rational mind beyond the capacity of mind even the highest mind even with the greatest intuition but as even with the over mind vision because this is something which is transcendental how can i convince that this is something which happens as well or together now this line is a very packed line super surrealistic if you like to say this line it is <laughs> surrealism is already there but i am going to get super you see <laughs> today this blaze and hieroglyph of prophet moons what deep occult contains are present here diamond like packed intense in this particular phrase blazon bright shiny shoe hieroglyph things which cannot be deciphered script ancient script you see prophet moons now this prophet moons shows us the encyclopedic knowledge of sri arbindo the vast background which he has of world literature world history world development world civilization in one single phrase prophet moon prophet moon alone is described in the quran prophet moon and in the quran there is a surah which speaks of muhammad having split the moon with his index finger due to so and the moon split that with his index finger prophet moon and the symbolism behind it is that it would be the arrival of the day of judgment judgment day of judgment and new things will start happening from that point onward these are the hieroglyphs legend hieroglyphs things will start happening from that when that moon is split like that it means the day of judgment is there and new things will start from that that is according to the purana this is quran in fact the word hieroglyph goes very well with the islamic description hieroglyphs the egyptian hieroglyphs are well known and therefore we could quite logically link up this one with what we have in the muslim tradition in that case hieroglyph of prophet moon prophet the future the bright future so narod is speaking of bright future he is drawing reference allusion making allusion to that event mamat with his index finger splitting the moon into two now there is also the biblical tradition connected with moons not one moon but moon in quran it is single moon split in the biblical tradition genesis particularly they speak of moons and it also pertains to the day of judgment what is going to happen 
on that day. In fact, before we go to that, let me show you. See, there is a tradition, long tradition, perhaps you people know also, what is called the tetrad moons, tetrad moons, four moons, no? <laughs> okay, uh, tetrad moons. What it means is that four consecutive eclipses of moon coming one after the other. That is called the tetrad moons. Four. Four consecutive eclipses, full moon coming one after the other. That is called the tetrad. Huh? One after the other. All the four consecutive, all the four consecutive. Uh, of course, every, yeah, eclipse is always on the full moon. Eclipse is always on the full moon. But four consecutive eclipses of the moon. It may be April, it may be June, whenever it be. But four consecutive eclipses. Four consecutive eclipses coming one after the other. That is, that is called the tetrad. And the symbolism of the tetrad is that it means great events going to take place. Did we ever have this? Huh? Did we ever have this? We had uh, about a week ago one of the tetras on 15th April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we did not know. No, one of the four. Four. One of the four. Obviously, you see, it cannot be the same day, obviously. See, one will be in uh, April, one will be sometime earlier, sometime earlier. All the three previous eclipses were full moon eclipses and culminating now with the fourth one. That is the tetrad. Consequence of great upheavals, great changes. <laughs> no. That is why, well, let's say, that is why it is a prophet moon. That is why it is a prophet moon. The phrase prophet means that, you see. <laughs> Great events taking place. Now it is for us to discern, we will see about that. But basically, the line is this blaze and hieroglyph of prophet moves, a meaning more sublime in symbols, which we cannot understand. Arise, then see, thought, etc. You see. Basically here, prophet. Now, uh, these are the last lunar eclipse, red moon, see, on 15th April. <laughs> yeah, we had about, about the three, four, three what is it go? Yeah, 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 this is one. We don't know it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but very, 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 yeah, very, 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 no, we, we didn't see in India, no, no, we didn't see in India, see, no, no, so this is, this is the picture now of how the eclipse is developing, it shows the, uh, Phases of the eclipse, different phases, you see. But this is uh, fantastic. You can make out a string of dots. And in between here, you got red, red, that's the eclipse. Before eclipse, <laughs> of the eclipse, you see. This is a picture taken by CNN, you see, you see, before the starting of the eclipse and then eclipse part here and then again after the eclipse, you see, red moon. Yeah, this is another one, this is very beautiful, <laughs> full moon eclipse. You see. Why does it turn red? It is like that. In the English. <laughs> yeah, it, it is it is red, it's true. 
You can see the changes in color, you see? Yes. No, it depends upon light and other conditions, you see. You can, you can easily make out from here how red it becomes, you see, at a full moon. And this string of moons, time, uh, it, it is uh, uh, time marked photograph, you see. Whole set of moons, you see. Now, this is a montage. I'm sure about this. Of course, it's a montage. He put all the, the photo, he took about the, the event in one picture. You think so? How you can put a montage? Yeah, and yeah. after he put a montage. Yeah, of course, yeah. You, you must have seen many times, you know, how the uh, time blooming of a flower is taken. Yeah, yeah. So this is the prophet moons, this blaze and hieroglyph prophet moon. Let me read something. Blood moons, they are called also blood moons, red moons. Decoding the imminent heavenly signs. By this one, you would, that is why you got hieroglyphs, blazon hieroglyphs, you see. <laughs> Sign. This is a book by one gentleman, Bills, B I L T Z. And the name of the book is Decoding the Imminent Heavenly Signs by this one. Means what this tetrad of moons means from the civilizational point of view. Crews embedded in biblical text point that something significant will happen. Because of this one. Things are changing and God is trying to communicate with us in a supernatural way. Hieroglyph of prophet moons, you <laughs> see. She even wrote long before this was there, you see. Does this mean that Jesus is coming? That is what the biblical question we you see. This tetrad. The answer is there is a possibility. One can't say definitely. There is a possibility. Will that be the end of the world? <laughs> no. Huh? End of the world. No. Can be now after this one. Yeah, that's right. We are living. <laughs> How long no. we have to wait? To we are living. <laughs> no. If we want to yeah. end the world. Yeah. No. Basically, we don't understand the meaning of the end. It means that the old cycle has to vanish, has to disappear, has to go away. That is what the end means. You see, old cycle has to go away. You see. Now, in the Bible, St. Matthew, he is not directly referring to this event, but before the crucifixion, the scene which he is presenting is something very ominous already. He says, the sun became darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. Eclipse. And the star shall fall from heaven. That is the calamitous. Hmm. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That event. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. Then shall appear the sign the son of man. And they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds. That is what basically the biblical connotation means. Basically it means that a new cycle of growth begins with that. 
end would mean that it is an end, it is a catastrophic end and a new cycle begins. I think we are also experiencing to some extent that kind of a thing in a very subtle manner. <laughs> yeah. And then he says in the in the in the uh, in the Quranas, the prophet split the moon in two halves with his index finger, pointing out in there. The hour has come near. It means that it is a sign of the arrival of the hour. Our, our, our here of course means the day of judgment. The hour has come near and the moon be split in. When four consecutive lunar eclipses total eclipses, then the group is known as a tetrad, as, as, as I just explained to you. It is a cycle of how many? It is a cycle of 18 years, 11 days, 8 hours. <laughs> 18 years, 11 days, 8 hours. Over a period of one tetrad means that long duration. Yeah, I am with you. <laughs> now, he says also around the crucifixion, Christ's crucifixion, there was no tetrad. No, it was not there. But then he says the first tetrad was seen in 162 AD. 62 AD, after crucifixion. 162. And I got the dates here. 162 first, next was 795 AD, then was 842, then was 860 AD, then was 1493, in the year 1493, uh, when Columbus had discovered America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all these are symbolic. 1493, then 1949, when 1493, 1493, then next is 1949, long period, that's right, yeah, long period, and 1949 really saw a great change in things, let me read, uh, 860, then 1493, then 14, 1949, yeah, when India became independent and all these changes took place and all those big things that happened, you see, 1940, Shavindos, withdrawal, all those things were great events, you see. 1949, then next was very swift, 1967, also, maybe that, perhaps, is there any relation? yeah, they, they, they have calculated, what is it? Exponential, no? no, I mean, uh, astronomically you can calculate. As, yeah, but it was very small. For, yeah, that's right. No, but uh, on the basis of the movement of these planets, they can calculate when the when they can predict when it's going to happen next. And then after 1967, we had 2014, April. April, around 15th, you see. It read. So, so. So let us hope that now big changes will take place. <laughs> and is, is there any event uh, happen really after each day? Well, uh, I don't have here, but we can find out. You see, for instance, Columbus was very clear, mm -hmm. like that. Some of them are very significant, immediate also. I can say uh, 860, 860 or around that time, uh, the, the uh, Arab civilization was at its peak. The Abbasid Empire was a glorious period of history. You see. There is no doubt about that. Abbasid period, you see. Three, three uh, caliphs, you see. So that way, there are there are certain historical relationships also. It's a question of now arguing out. You see. <laughs> so these are the events, and then. NASA has calculated that between 1999 and 3000, that is during the current thousand years, current millennium, 
there will be in all 12,064 eclipses. <laughs> 12,064. Now, now out of 12,064, there will be very few tetrads. Obviously, you see. This blessing, what a powerful line, you see. And she even wrote that thing in 1946. This line. So, what is the relation now between all this and this prophet? Do you mean that? Uh, uh, I mean, it's your interpretation that this prophet knows it's about the tetra moons or not? No, it, it means that it is going to be a period of great upheavals leading to something new cyclic movement. That is why it is profit also. See, I will say that unless there is some kind of a basis in the, uh, the tradition, whether it is Surah or whether it is Bible or whatever, this is not there in India. Unless there is some truth behind that, Shri Aurobindo would not make a mention of it here. It means that he is asserting the truth behind the tradition. One line. This blazoned hieroglyph of prophet moon and what a powerful line it is. That is a poetry itself. Solid line, you see. This blazoned hieroglyph of prophet moon. A meaning most sublime. Now the rest is simple. The meaning most sublime in symbols writes. Then seal thought wakes to, but of this high script, how shall my voice convey the mind of earth? This, <laughs> see, if Narad can convince, you are asking me to convince. <laughs> that is very unjust. <laughs> uh, and then he says. Heaven's wiser love rejects the mortal's prayer. Unblinded by the breath of his desire, unclouded by the mist of fear and hope, it bends above the strife of love with death. It keeps for her her privilege of pain. It keeps for her her privilege of pain. This is in response to what Ashwapati had asked. I deemed a mighty power had come with her. He is not that power, the high computer of fate. This is what Ashwapati was asking. And Narada replied, it keys for her, her privilege of pain. She had to have pain. And he says that heaven is wiser than our considerations, than what we can think of. Heaven rejects the martyr's prayer. Well, we don't understand that thing. Normally, you see, you go to Samadhi and say, I want this, I want that, etc. etc. <laughs> and Samadhi, in her wisdom, says, sorry, you are not going to get that. <laughs> because perhaps it might prove a kind of a block for your progress, you see. So you have to work out yourself. <laughs> Heaven's wiser love rejects the mortal's prayer. Unblinded, it is not blinded by our ideas and thoughts and our thinking and our arguments, you see. It does not get blinded by that. 